have you ever noticed that when you peel apart an Oreo, the cream never seems to split evenly? I mean, I feel like I never get the cookie to cream ratio that I want, and then I end up sort of messing around myself and scraping off some of the cream onto the other cookie. So I decided it's time to figure out really does the cream never split evenly because that's surely what it feels like and if that's true is there anything we can do to change that i know this is already my second oreo experiment on this channel but you know, I Oreos are great to play with. You know, maybe this is why I got my PhD in food science. I'm kidding, mom and dad, I'm totally joking. First things first, I know it sure feels like Oreos never split evenly when you peel them apart, but I need to get some data on this. And for that, I got this 36 pack of Oreos. And I know this is the typical package in the US, but in the Netherlands, I had to go to three different grocery stores to find this big of an Oreo package. All right, so I'm gonna open this package and peel the cookies apart one by one, trying to do it the same each time, because I want to see how often does it really happen that the cream totally ends up on one of the wafers versus splitting versus, I don't know, a broken cookie. Let's just see how this entire box of Oreos splits up. With these results, there's four different categories I think each cookie falls in. So if 95% or more of the cream just entirely goes onto one wafer, we're gonna call that wafer one, which is the left wafer. And I mean left when you look at the container, the package of Oreos, and you can read the font, it's upright in front of you. Left wafer will be wafer number one. If the cream goes on entirely onto the right wafer, we'll just call that wafer two. If the cream is split between the two wafers, well, that's a split. And there also could be broken cookies. So it's wafer one, wafer two, split, or broken. If I tally up my results from this one package of Oreos, here's the breakdown. With 10 of the cookies, the cream totally goes on wafer one, but with 23 of the cookies, the cream entirely goes on wafer two which means there's a 92% chance the cream either goes on wafer one or two. It's not split at all, which is really annoying to me because that's what I hate. Now the chance of getting a split is a measly 8% according to this package. And because, you know, I'm a professional, I didn't get any broken cookies. Now, because I only looked at one package of Oreos, I want to compare my results to a study done at MIT where they did the same thing. They peeled apart Oreos and looked where the cream landed, except they probably used a lot more Oreos and they also looked at double stuffed and mega stuffed Oreos. So let's take the data from the paper on Oreology, the fracture and flow of Milk's favorite cookie and put it side by side with the data I just collected. Now, a couple of things right away pop out that are very similar between these two studies. First, the bad news. Both the studies saw that getting the cream split between the two rafers, there's a very small chance of this happening. It's always lower than 10%. And this is because it seems like the cream always prefers to go on just one of the wafers. Now, what's interesting in my study, the wafer the cream seemed to prefer the most was wafer two, that was the right-hand wafer. Whereas in the MIT study, there's a huge chance that the cream always goes on wafer one. Now, I'm not sure what would explain this difference, but my first thought was that the MIT study probably purchased Oreos made in the United States. Whereas here, I purchased Oreos in the Netherlands, so they were probably made in Europe and it's possible that the machinery that packs these cookies into the rows or in the sleeves, maybe in Europe, it packs the cookies in one orientation, but in the United States, it packs them in the opposite orientation. But regardless, what I think is the most important point is there's always one wafer the cream really seems to prefer. Because if that was not the case, there would be a 50-50 chance that the cream goes on the left versus the right wafer, which is not what either of these studies saw. And thinking about this result, my best guess is that this comes down to how the Oreos are manufactured. 
because if you think about this process, you would start with a bottom wafer, the cream is deposited onto that bottom wafer, and a second wafer is simply just pressed on top to make a sandwich. And if I had to guess, I would say that the cream has a stronger interaction with that bottom wafer, the wafer it was deposited on, instead of the wafer that just was added on top, which might explain when we sort of twist apart an Oreo, the cream always goes on to that wafer that was initially on the bottom, that it is more bonded to as stronger interactions with. So I guess we have answered the first question, you know, why does it feel like Oreos never split apart evenly? Well, it feels that way because it's true and we have the data to prove it. But now we're almost on to the harder of the questions. Can we, the consumers, the people that love Oreos, are we able to do something to get that cream to split evenly? Can we force it? to stop peeling off on just one of the Oreos and actually peel off on both. Now I had to take a couple days to do some research and reading about this. And it was interesting because I started very much in the food science literature, but ended up more in the material science realm. And it's so hilarious because I'm just trying to figure out why an Oreo doesn't, you know, split apart evenly. But all the examples in material science are like, you're painting a wall or you're trying to put two metals together with an adhesive so it's just totally different stuff but it seems like our problem boils down to adhesive failure versus cohesive failure now the difference between these two is that adhesive failure means that the adhesive which is the cream in an oreo it means the adhesive totally delaminates or separates from one of the bonding materials. So this is when one of the wafers entirely receives the cream and the other has no cream. What we actually want is for the cream to split evenly, which would be cohesive failure. And that's because in cohesive failure, the failure or the breakage occurs in the adhesive itself. Or in other words, the failure occurs within the cream itself, and so the cream splits apart and the cream ends up on both of the wafers. So our problem is that Oreos fail adhesively, and what we want to do is make them fail cohesively, but I'm not sure how to do that, so I'm going to need to do some reading. All right, so it seems like there's three general ways we could go about this. Option number one is changing the surface, which for us, that just means changing something about the wafers, the cookies itself. Option two, this is changing the adhesive, which for us, of course, is the cream. That's what glues the wafers together. Option three is applying a curing process. And I know that sounds really weird because we're talking about food, but like I said, a lot of this is in the material science space. But what they mean by a curing process is you apply some parameter, whether it's pressure, humidity, a temperature that sort of uh, strength, strengthens the link between uh, two substrates, between two surfaces. Let's consider option one first, and remember this is changing the surface or the wafer. Now there would be a couple of ways to go about this, but I think as like an average consumer of Oreos, we don't have a lot of a say in this. You would need uh, Mondelez, the maker of Oreos, one to change ingredients of the wafer. Maybe there is some ingredients that would interact with the cream more. Uh, but of course they're not, I don't think they're gonna do that. Oreos have been around for a long time and people also probably would not, you know, enjoy if the Oreo cookie changed. But I will say one small change they could try and I would be so curious to see the results is if they simply change the surface inside the wafer to be more bumpy or have like small protrusions because this would allow some of the cream to sort of sink in to those holes and this would give more surface area of the wafer for the cream to interact with. Because if you look at Oreos, the outside surface is actually very, very bumpy but the inside is a totally different surface. It has kind of these small ridges but I would be curious how an Oreo would peel apart if the inside of the wafer also had that bumpy surface. With option two, changing the adhesive or the cream, 
I feel like we're in a very similar boat as option one. Of course, Mondelez could do some formulation changes. You can make something be more sticky so it would stick to both the wafers. You could make it softer. Maybe that helps it uh, peel apart evenly. But like I said, they're not going to make these changes to such a food product that is loved by so many people. Because if you change the texture to make it, you know, stick to the wafers, it also changes the texture that we experience in our mouth. And typically people don't like when you mess with their food and sort of switch things up on them. But option three, this is where I think we have a lot of room to play. Because remember, option three is applying a curing process which means, you know, anything from letting something evaporate to applying a certain pressure. Basically, it's just some type of process to strengthen the interaction between the two surfaces and the adhesive. And actually the MIT paper pointed out something I found very interesting. So they reported that occasionally they would get a new box of Oreos and randomly these Oreos would split cohesively or fail cohesively where cream did end up on both of the wafers. And as a food scientist and someone who has learned about product development, this got me thinking that the most likely thing to happen to this box of Oreos was temperature abuse, which just means they were stored at too high of temperature, something melted, once it came back down to a normal storage temperature, things re-solidified. And if you are a product developer, this is exactly the type of thing you worry about because no matter how perfectly you make your food product in your own manufacturing facility, once those are shipped out, maybe they're taken with a semi-truck, uh, they're transported, they sit on a dock, then they finally go into the grocery store, you have lost control once your product leaves your facility. But what's funny in this case is the temperature abuse, which is usually considered a bad thing, actually made the Oreos do exactly what I want them to do. It made them split evenly, which makes me think, why can't I just temperature abuse the Oreos after I buy them? So this seems easy enough. Why don't I just take my package of Oreos, put it outside in the sun for a couple days so that it melts, solidifies overnight, melts, re-solidifies, etc. I would say the average temperature in the Netherlands, it's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a pretty mild summer climate. And I left the sleeve of Oreos outside for three straight days. So let's see if this curing process worked out. And I have some control Oreos here just to remind you how the Oreos typically twisted apart, right? All that cream on one wafer. Oh. Oh, interesting. Let me show you this. I can already see a difference. So that outside Oreo, the Oreo's left outside for three days in my left hand, you can see it's a lot thinner. It's skinnier than the control. So the cream must have melted down into a thinner layer, but let's see how this impacts the Oreo when I twist these outdoor Oreos apart. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's happening. It's working, guys. By my tally, I would say that only the last two Oreos didn't split evenly. All the other ones are much better. So that's about 12 out of 14 Oreos that twisted apart evenly, or at least way better than a normal package of Oreos would. So the outdoor curing process does seem to work. A lot more of the Oreos are failing cohesively, which means the cream is splitting between the two wafers. But this process took several days, which got me thinking, why couldn't I do this much faster? Which means I'm gonna microwave some Oreos. Now, I'm not really sure how long an Oreo should be microwaved. I just want to partially melt the cream so that it will later re-solidify and uh, have a new interaction with these two wafers. So I guess I'm going to try 30 seconds first. I'll do a couple at 30 seconds and then maybe pick a second temperature. So after 30 seconds, it doesn't look much different. I can't really tell if anything has melted, but 
I'll just do uh, two more at 30 seconds and then uh, set them aside. Because I can't really see if there's any changes at 30 seconds, I'm gonna increase the time. I'm going to try one minute. I'm not sure if this is too long, uh, but we'll see in a minute. Oh, okay, so this is interesting. You can definitely tell this one has melted. You can see the cream has sort of been smushed out from the center. You can really see the cream at the outer edges of the Oreo now. So this is good. I want to try a couple more at uh, one minute. And like I said, I'm going to let these microwave cookies sit overnight because I don't want to peel them apart when the cream is still liquid-like. I want that melted cream to re-solidify and remake those interactions with the two wafers. And I hope these interactions are more uh, even so that when peeled apart tomorrow, the cream will be shared between the two wafers. All right, it's time. Let's see if microwaving Oreos also makes them twist apart more evenly. So here's the three Oreos I microwaved 30 seconds. I know three's not a big number, but guys, I gotta stop buying Oreos. Oh, oh, do you see that? All right, cream on both wafers. Let's continue again. Okay, okay. Now, I mean, I'm gonna say that's three out of three cookies. So a quick 30 seconds in the microwave can also do the trick. But now I'm curious if 60 seconds also works or maybe it was too long for some reason. And you can see that the cream, it really does seem to have melted more. It's, it's a much thinner layer. It's spread near to the edges of the wafer. So, oh, bad. But let's try another one. The second one, I mean, the second one is okay. I mean, I would count that as the cream spreading evenly. Last one. Hmm, not a great twist apart. I don't really like the results of the 60 seconds microwave cookies. It seems like 60 seconds must have been too long. I'm not certain why it's not working as well. My first guess is that maybe the cream fractures differently when it's been melted into such a thin layer. Then that layer extends all the way to the edges of the cookies. I'm not certain though. So what it seems like to me is there's sort of a sweet spot with temperature abuse. If you do, you know, a mild treatment of putting the cookies outside or maybe 30 to 45 seconds in the microwave, this does help the Oreo split more evenly and have the cream on both wafers. But you can also take that temperature treatment too far and again you have adhesive failure in your Oreos. But I gotta say you guys, I have to stop the Oreo experiments for now because I've eaten way too many Oreos. I don't have any self-control. Like I can't just eat one or two. So I have to stop this. But if you have any tricks or tips for peeling Oreos apart to get just the right cream to wafer distribution, please put it down in the comments. I can't wait to hear your ideas. But otherwise, I will talk to you next time.